Okay, so let's look at some examples. Let's let r of t be a line, which is r0 plus vt. Let's find the derivative of r. So first, let's express r of t as components. And just the convention we've been using is r0 has coordinates x0, y0, z0, and v has components a, b, and c. So this is what r of t looks like when we write out its uh, component functions. So then r prime of t is going to be the derivative of each of these guys. Well, x0 is constant, so it's derivative of 0. a is constant, and t has derivative 1 with respect to t, so we're left with just a. Similarly, the derivative here is b, and the derivative here is c. So in fact, we have that the derivative is just v. So the derivative here is constant. So when we have this sort of par uh, parameterization of a line, its derivative is constant. Fantastic. Okay, here's another example. Let's find the tangent line to r of t, which is defined by cosine of t, sine of t, and 2 minus sine of t when t is equal to pi over 4. So let's go ahead. Well, to figure this out, we need to know what r of pi over 4 is. And plugging this in, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Great, so that's our point. The derivative of our function is minus sine of t, cosine of t, and minus cosine of t of t. So the derivative at pi over 4 is equal to minus root 2 over 2, uh, root 2 over 2, and minus root 2 over 2. So this means that the tangent line has equation, and let's call this L pi over 4, because I guess that's what I was calling it before. It has equation root 2 over 2. Uh, which is the x-coordinate, minus root 2 over 2t, root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2t, and 2 minus root 2 over 2 minus root 2 over 2t. Fantastic. Now, this is kind of an annoying expression to deal with right here, and since the tangent line uh, uh, is parallel, to any vector that's parallel to this guy, we easily could have also taken our vector to be, say, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and that would have made our life a little bit easier. Um, but whatever, it's, uh, you know, that's the way we did it. Okay, let's find the unit tangent vector of this vector function, which is cosine of t, sine of t, t. And to do this, first we're going to find the tangent vector at every point. Uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of t is 1. Now to figure out what the unit tangent vector is, we have to figure out the magnitude of this vector expression. So the magnitude here is going to be the square root of the squares of the uh, components. So we get negative sine squared of t plus cosine t squared plus 1 squared. Well, this is just sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t plus 1. And sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So it's the square root of 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. So that means that the unit tangent vector, which is r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t, is equal to negative sine of t divided by root 2 cosine of t divided by root 2, comma, 1 over root 2. It's not always going to work out this nicely. Generally, the magnitude of your tangent vector is not going to be constant like it is here, but here it worked out nicely. So here are some basic facts about differentiation of vector functions. First of all, if you take the derivative of a constant multiple, it's the constant multiple of the derivative. The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. Same thing with the difference. 
we have three versions of the product rule. Now I'm taking R and S to be vector functions, C is a constant, and F is a scalar function. That means a regular old function with one input, one output. So the derivative of a scalar function times a vector function, so this is just regular old multiplication, is F prime times R plus F times R prime, great. The derivative of a dot product also follows the product rule. The derivative of r dot s is r prime dot s plus r dot s prime. Same thing with the cross product. The derivative of r cross s is r prime cross s plus r cross s prime. And finally, the chain rule. This is the only form that makes sense to us right now. Uh, the derivative of r of f of t, so since f is a scalar function, it takes t as an input, spits out another scalar, which you can plug into r. That's fine. Um, this is like the chain rule. The derivative is going to be r prime of f of t times f prime of t. Note that right now we don't really, we can't have r prime, um, a vector function r on the inside because we would be talking about a function that takes multiple inputs and we're not doing that yet. So great. All right. So here's an example if, uh, of applying this. So uh, if we have a vector function which, uh, whose magnitude is a constant, then it turns out that r dot r prime is always equal to zero. So if a vector function has constant magnitude, that means that it actually lies on a circle about the origin. When you, or excuse me, a sphere about the origin. That also implies that any, uh, any of these vectors r are actually perpendicular to the, uh, the sphere because they're all radiuses, right? They're all radii pretty much, and radii are uh, perpendicular to the surface of the sphere that they're a radius of. And so if r dot r prime is equal to zero, that means that the tangent line is actually also tangent to the circle. The tangent vector is tangent to the sphere, excuse me. Um, so let's show this. So if r has constant magnitude c, that means that r dot r has constant magnitude c squared because r dot r is equal to the square of the magnitude. Taking derivatives, I have that r prime t dot r of t plus r of t dot r prime of t by the product rule for the dot product is equal to zero because c is a constant. Well, the dot product is also commutative. So this is really the same thing as two um, times r of t dot r prime of t, and that is equal to zero. Divide both sides by t, uh, two gives me r dot r prime is equal to zero. Okay, so we've also got integration, and integration just like differentiation happens component by component. The integral from a to b of r of t dt is just the integral from a to b of each of the components, so from a to b of f of t dt, comma from the integral from a to b of g of t dt, comma the integral from a to b of h of t dt. And the fundamental theorem of calculus gives us that if big R is an antiderivative of little r, that is big R prime is equal to little r, then the integral from a to b of little r dt is big R evaluated at b minus big R evaluated at a, which we can always uh, express using this sort of notation. Okay, let's consider the following. A particle has a velocity vector given by v of t is equal to negative sine, cosine, one plus sine of two, uh, negative sine of t, cosine of t, and one plus sine of two t over two. Let's find the displacement of this particle from t equal to zero to t equal to three pi over two. So this means that we're integrating the velocity from zero to three pi over two the velocity v of t dt. So we have to find an antiderivative of this function. So we do that component by component. The antiderivative of sine, uh, negative sine is cosine of t. Uh, the antiderivative of cosine is sine of t. And of one plus sine of two t over two is t. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of two t and I get divided by four. When I integrate a function and I've got a constant multiple of my variable of integration, I always have to divide by that guy when I integrate, so I'm divided by two. 
you can check that the derivative of minus cosine 2t over 4 is in fact sine of 2t over 2. And this is going from 0 to 3 pi over 2. So I plug in. When I plug in 3 pi over 2, uh, cosine of that is equal to 0. Sine of that is equal to negative 1. When I plug in 3 pi over 2 into here, I get 3 pi over 2 minus cosine of 3 pi is equal to negative uh, 1. So that's plus 1 quarter. Minus, when I plug in 0, cosine of 0 is uh, 1, sine of 0 is 0, t at 0 is 0, minus cosine of 0, which is 1 over 4, so minus a quarter. And putting these together, I got 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 minus 0, which is negative 1, and 3 pi over 2 plus 1 quarter minus negative 1 quarter, which is 3 pi over 2 plus 1 half. Fantastic.